Thank you to Makana Look and Tea Apana for the beautiful opening to this event. Good afternoon and welcome to the Michael D. Nakosone Performing Arts Center Dedication Concert and Ceremony. I am Fernando Pacheco, a proud Pearl City High School Band alumni, and I will be your master of ceremonies this afternoon. Could you all please rise, if you are able, for the playing of our national anthem and Hawaii Ponoi, conducted by Mililani High School Band Director, Mr. Derek Ka'apana. Thank you, Mr. Ka'apana. Before we begin, we have a few housekeeping items. First, due to unforeseen circumstances, a few programming changes were made to the program. Tea Apana delivered our opening oli, and Chadwick Kame will be conducting the Pines of Rome. Please silence all cell phones, electronic devices, as they distract from the ceremony. Secondly, restrooms are located in the lobby. The men's restroom is on the Makai side of the building, and the women's restroom is located on the Malka side of the building. Thank you. Sitting before you is an ensemble made up of musicians that have played under the baton of Maestro Nakasone. Members were from various music programs such as the Pearl City High School Band, Punahou Academy Band, the Royal Hawaiian Band, the Hawaii Youth Symphony, and the University of Hawaii West Oahu Band. Some of these musicians haven't played for years, <laughs> but dusted off their instruments to honor Maestro Nakosone and for another opportunity to play under his direction one more time. Thank you to these 100 musicians for putting in many hours of rehearsals for over the last six weeks. Could we please give them all a hand?
Before we begin, we would like to bring up the principal of Pearl City High School, Mr. Joseph Hoffman, for a few remarks to introduce our special guests. Good afternoon, I am Joseph Hoffman. I'm the principal here at Pearl City High School. I wanna thank every one of you for coming today to celebrate this very special occasion, honoring Mr. Nakasone, and uh, it's obvious by your support and joining us here how much uh, he's impacted so many lives. Uh, we're also very uh, lucky and very blessed to have many special guests joining us today. So when I call your name, please stand so that we can recognize you. We have Governor David Ige. First Lady Don Amano Ige. Vice President of the Senate, uh, Michelle Kidani, as well as Senator Clarence Nishihara. We have representatives Greg Takayama, Sylvia Luke, Roy Takumi, Henry Aquino, and Val Okimoto. Also joining us, Council Member Brandon Elefante. The Honorable John Waihe'e III and First Lady, former First Lady, Lynn Waihe'e. The Honorable Benjamin Cayetano and former First Lady Vicky Cayetano. The Honorable Mufi Hanneman. Former State Senators Eloise Tungpalan and Ron Menor. Former State Representative Nobu Yonomine. <laughs> Superintendent Keith Hayashi. <laughs> Assistant Deputy Superintendent Heidi Armstrong and Complex Area Superintendent Keith Hui. Dr. Anna Vigiano, the Educational Specialist for the Learning Centers. <laughs> Dr. Jeff Muniz, Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs, University of Hawaii on Oahu. <laughs> Dr. John Magnuson, Chair of the Humanities Division, University of Hawaii, West Oahu. Ms. Daphne Okunaga, Pearl City High School Community Council Chair. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Dion Mesta, Vice Chair of the Pearl City High, uh, Pearl City Neighborhood Board. <laughs> Dr. Karen Moriyama, retired complex area superintendent for Nanakuli, Pearl City, and Waipahu Complex. <laughs> a gentleman who had a lot to do with this auditorium, Mr. Gerald Suyama, retired principal of Pearl City High School. My former boss, Ms. Carlene Fujimoto, retired principal of Pearl City High School. <laughs> Mr. Aaron Tominaga, former principal of Pearl City High School and current principal of the year. <laughs> Mr. Boniface Leong, retired band director of Highlands Intermediate School.
I would like to just say two thank yous for individuals who really helped making this event possible. The first one I would like to thank is our head custodian and her crew, as well as the facilities crew for the Department of Education, who really have this auditorium uh, looking better than I have personally ever seen. Not Mr. Siama, because he saw it when it was brand new, but I have seen it's better than I have ever seen it before. And they put in countless hours of work. So I just want to thank them very much uh, for making the auditorium uh, presentable in such a way that uh, Mr. Nakasone could be proud. So I want to give them a call. Yeah. And lastly, I would like to thank Mr. Kamei. Uh, Chad Kamei came to me several, I'd say, years ago with this idea and uh, was the one who did all of the labor to make sure this event could happen. So I just appreciate uh, the work that Bandmaster Kamei has done to be able to honor Mr. Nakasone and to do this for the community. So let's give him a round of applause as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Principal Hoffman. Our first speaker this afternoon is the Honorable David Ige. Governor Ige was born and raised in Pearl City, graduating from Pearl City High School in 1975. He was also the first president of the band program. Governor Ige began his political, political career in 1985 after being appointed to fill a vacant seat in the Hawaii House of Representatives. In 1994, then Representative Ige was elected to the Hawaii Senate, where he represented his home district of Aiea, Pearl City. In 2014, he was elected to governor, and in December, will complete his second term. Please welcome to the stage, Governor David Ige. Aloha. Thank you so much uh, for inviting Don and I to be part of this very, very special afternoon. You know, just looking at the program, and I think all of you on stage know, this is a very Nakasone-esque kind of production, right? <laughs> I mean, when would we ever bring back his former students um, to be able to put together an ensemble to be part of this very, very special day? the renaming of the Pro City Performing Arts Center uh, to the Michael D. Nakasone Performing Arts Center. Uh, you know, I was the very first president of the Pro City High School Band as a freshman here at Pro City High School. And you know, I know that the reason that the Pro City High School Band became world famous was because I was here, right? <laughs> But you know, I know somehow the invitation to perform this afternoon got lost in the mail. <laughs> so something is definitely amiss. <laughs> but you know, it really is an honor for me to be here today to really honor such an outstanding person in Michael Nakasone. Nothing would be further from the truth than to say that the Pearl City High School Band is the world famous Pearl City High School symphoni symphonic ensemble and the world famous Pearl City High School marching band, charger marching band, because of one person, and that is Michael Nakasone. You know, the world-famous Pearl City High School Band is known from New York City to Pasadena, California, from Washington, D.C. to Tokyo, Japan, because of Michael Nakasone and his commitment to excellence and musical excellence. But not only that, about challenging and inspiring our students, and many of them are here, 
to truly believe that with lots of hard work and commitment, you can be the best in the world in the band. So it really was about having this world-class program at Pearl City High School that has truly changed our community. You know, I um, am so proud to have been able to get lobbied by Mr. Michael Nakasone about how we really needed to have a performing arts center because the students deserved it. And over and over again, for a couple years, we were unable to secure funding for this facility. You know, it's really hard because back then, the Department of Education said, no, a performing arts center is not in our educational specs and we're not gonna support you asking for it. Can you imagine that? So what did we have to do? We had to create an end around because the Department of Education wouldn't build this center. So working with Governor Waihei, we had to have DAGs take control of the building because the Department of Education wouldn't do it. So I am so proud and honored to be here today because we were able to find a workaround. We were able to get the funding for this, pro, uh, this center, and we are here today to rename it and rededicate it for all the students who have been inspired to go on, to be the best that they could be, to pursue their dreams, to be able to know that the foundation established here at Pearl City High School will take them anywhere that their dreams would lead them. You know, it really is remarkable when you think about um, Michael Nakasone's career because he wasn't satisfied with just good enough. He truly challenged the students to go beyond whatever they th think they could do and do even more. And I'll just tell you a real short, funny story about Michael Nakasone, right? You know, Pearl City High School Marching Band was one of the very first marching bands to perform at the University of Hawaii um, football games. You know, they didn't do that very much, but Michael Nakasone needed bigger challenges. So in true Nakasone fashion, he fashions this elaborate halftime show, right? And it just wows the entire audience at Aloha Stadium, standing ovation. What is this high school band doing here playing at University of Hawaii football games? And everybody is just raving, wow, we don't need the UH band, we just need to get, <laughs> right? The Pro City High School band every year. Well, you know what happens? The band director at UH goes, we gotta get rid of that Pro City High School band. <laughs> You guys need to put them on the band list and not let them perform ever again at, at the University of Hawaii football game, right? So Mike calls me up and he says, hey, David, I need your help. I said, what? They won't let me play at the University of Hawaii football game. This true story, ask Mike. <laughs> so I had to negotiate with the athletic director to at least allow the Pro City High School marching band to perform once a year. You know, Mike wanted to do every game, <laughs> right? The people wanted him to do every game, but I negotiated for one game every other year. I think he got to be able to do it every year, but that is the essence and the legend of Michael Nakasone. You know, taking the band, inspiring them to do all that they can, not letting them believe that they can't be the best program on the planet, challenging the students to go as far as they can, challenging the parents, and let me just say this, the parents wanted to make sure that I didn't agree to let Mike Nakasone perform at every UH game because they would be exhausted. <laughs> but I am so proud to be governor, to be here today, to dedicate this building to Michael D. Nakasone. I could not ever think of a more perfect person to have their name on this building to inspire the next generation of band students to dream about all that they can be and don't let anybody or anything deny them from pursuing their dreams. 
Congratulations, Mike. I do have a commendation that I would like to present to you on behalf of the people of Hawaii and the people of Pearl City especially. Thank you so much for your dedication, for your inspiration, for teaching us about being truly world-class in everything we do. Aloha and mahalo. Thank you, Governor Ige. Maestro Nakasone was born in Hilo and was the 21st bandmaster of the Royal Hawaiian Band. So it is fitting that our first selection this afternoon is Hilo March by Joseph Kapeao Aea. Conducting this selection is the 22nd bandmaster of the Royal Hawaiian Band, Bandmaster Clark Bright. Accompanying Bandmaster Bright is Ms. Karen Keave Hawaii on vocals and Ms. Kuule Hazelwood dancing hula. Here is Joseph Kapeaua's Hilo March. Our next speaker this afternoon is the Honorable John D. Wahe III. Born in Honoka'a, the former governor's political career began with his election to the Constitutional Convention of 1978. In 1980, he was elected to the Hawaii House of Representatives, and in 1982, he was elected Lieutenant Governor of Hawaii. In 1986, he became Hawaii's fourth elected governor and the first elected governor of Hawaiian ancestry. Former Governor Wahe'ez, he was instrumental in the establishment of this auditorium. 
It was through his administration that this project was approved and broke ground in 1993. Can we welcome to the podium the Honorable John D. Waihe'e. Aloha. That's a, he's a very enthusiastic master of ceremonies. You know, you get excited over here. I need to uh, say, um, Governor Ige, First Lady Dawn, First Lady Lynn, First Lady Vicky, First Gentleman, maybe Ben. <laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, honored guests, it's good to be here. I'm going to keep it short because I probably had the least to do with this building, uh, except give the money. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's so funny because um, actually I told Mike in, in the back room here that he, he really is the uh, father of this, of this auditorium, of this program really. Because while I was in office, he was becoming very famous and, you know, here we are, we're very proud of having a high school band from Hawaii being known all over the nation and being governor when that's known all over the nation, <laughs> you know, so you can take a lot of credit for what is happening. And, and nevertheless, you know, so in the process of all of that, one day I get a visit from a young representative, new representative, in the Hawaii State House, uh, and he comes up to me and he's, he's, uh, he, he wants to talk to me, and that's uh, Representative David Ige from Pearl City. And you saw him today, how enthusiastic he was about this program, about banning, about Pearl City. You know, now, David is an engineer, which means that some of the conversations you know, not as animated as others, you know? But to see somebody that's usually, uh, you know, hurry up, David, you know, like that. And uh, so animated about this program, you got the sense of how he was when he came to lobby me. And he was so enthusiastic in talking about the band program and how it would, we were creating opportunities for children of Hawaii that didn't exist before, how we were being recognized and the like. And it was his school. And I asked him, I said, why didn't you put the money in the budget? You know, what's happening? He said, well, I can't get it through the Department of Education. And one of the good things about being governor is sometimes you can be governor. So we called our department up and said, hey, whatever David Ige wants, give it to him. So his wife complained that we don't have enough seats in here. Talk to your husband. He... <laughs> anyway, as a result of that, this program got funded. Now, it only, that should have happened anyway, because we had created a performing arts center at Castle and because we had an outstanding teacher there, a, a bright, we, we created a performing center at Kaimaki where there were other outstanding people. So it only seemed correct that Pearl City, where there was an outstanding marching band, should have a performing arts center too. And as a result of that enthusiasm, as a result of the work of Mike, uh, uh, and uh, of the representatives from this area, David Ige, Eloise Tampolan. I thought I saw Nobu here someplace. Yeah, Nobu and the others. This is what happened. And so it's my honor to be here today to commemorate or to celebrate the renaming of this place to be the Nakasone Performing Arts Center. It's, 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 it's truly a well-deserved Honor. Thank you very much. Thank you, former Governor Wahe'e. Our next selection this afternoon is Highlights from the Music Man by Meredith Wilson and arranged by Alfred Reed. 
Maestro Nakosone is truly Hawaii's music man, sharing his knowledge and love of music with the communities that he served. Conducting this afternoon is one of Maestro Nakasone's good friends, Professor Joseph Herman, Emeritus Director of Bands from Tennessee Technological University. A resident of Cookville, Tennessee, Professor Herman is a past president of the American Bandmasters Association, the most prestigious band director organization in the world. Please welcome Professor Herman conducting Meredith Wilson's The Music Man. Thank you. 
Our next speaker this afternoon is the Honorable Benjamin Cayetano. Former Governor Cayetano grew up in Kalihi and graduated from Farrington High School. He began his career in government in 1972 when he was appointed to the Hawaii Housing Authority. In 1974, he was elected to the State House of Representatives, followed by election to the State Senate in 1978. He was Lieutenant Governor under then Governor Wahe'e, and in 1994 was elected to two terms as Governor. During his tenure, the Pearl City Cultural Center was completed and funding was provided for much needed equipment. Please welcome to the podium, the Honorable Benjamin Cayetano. Aloha. You know, I, it's hard when you're third, you know. <laughs> but one thing that I, I've never heard David talk so much. <laughs> but he was excited and so am I. Vicki and I are very proud to be here to join you in this event. And it gives me an opportunity also to thank, especially the people with gray hair out there, for giving me the privilege and honor of representing this area for 12 years when I was a, a member of the legislature. Those are good times back then. I was talking to Mike and uh, he reminded me, he said, oh, you helped us out. I said, gee, I don't remember. I mean, I'm 83, you know, you know how it is. <laughs> oh yeah, he said, we needed more chairs and benches and you know, we're having a hard time because of the economy. I went to see you in your office and you got it for us. Okay, so I contributed to this. <laughs> <laughs> very, very proud to have represented this area. And I must say that uh, it's good to be here again. I'm just amazed at what's happening to uh, Pearl City High School. And you know, under the direction of uh, Mike Nakasone, the Pearl City Marching Band is one of the finest in the nation. And we can be very, very proud of that. I frankly think it's better than the UH band. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. Don't get mad. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, John, that's enough. <laughs> you had your turn. I don't know about this first man thing, you know, I gotta tell you that. <laughs> but thank you very much. And to Mike, you know, one of the, one of the things about uh, great teachers is that through their dedication, their empathy uh, for their students, they're the ones that you remember when you're my age. If, if someone were today to ask me who was my uh, favorite uh, elementary school teacher, right off the bat, I would say it was Mrs. Ai. Who was your favorite uh, intermediate uh, teacher? Harold Higa, my bandmaster. And what about when you were at Farrington? Susan Chun. And what about when you were at UCLA? Martin Edelman. Great teachers leave impressions. They impart values to the students. They inspire and they have a great deal to do with how their students develop. Many people today, including the folks here in the band, will remember Michael Nakasone for the great teacher that he, he is. And it's well deserved. You know, this magnificent performance center enhances the quality of life here 
in this area. It enhances the education and the knowledge of music with students. And most of all, it's an honor that's well deserved on a great teacher. Thank you very much and aloha. Thank you, former Governor Cayetano. Our next selection this afternoon is Mr. Music, a concert march composed by Alfred Reed. This piece was written for Mr. Toshio Akiyama, a Japanese conductor who is also a good friend of Maestro Nakasone. Conducting this piece is another great friend of Maestro Nakasone. Dr. Terry Austin is the Emeritus Director of Bands and Department Chair at Virginia Commonwealth University. Dr. Austin is a past president of the American Bandmasters Association and retired from his position only one month ago. Please welcome to the stage Dr. Terry Austin conducting Mr. Music. Next, we would like to bring up our area senators for a special presentation. Please welcome Vice President of the Senate, Senator Michelle Kidani and Senator Clarence Nishihara.
Aloha. Isn't this a wonderful mix? We have Pearl City High School, UH West Oahu, the Royal Hawaiian Band, and uh, Punahou Academy. Ladies and gentlemen, aren't they doing a fabulous job? But I must say, there's one thing missing. You guys didn't invite Governor Ige. <laughs> Governor, not to worry. The next time Senate has its opening day, we will invite you to play for us. <laughs> Wait for the invitation. <laughs> Thank you for having us tonight. We're really here on behalf of Senator Misa Lucha, who um, represents this district, and she couldn't be here because of illness. But Senator Misa Lucha was looking forward to this event, and it, unfortunately, because of illness, was not able to be here. There is a famous poem titled, If, by renowned poet Rudyard Kipling. And one of the lines from that poem is, if you can walk with kings and not lose the common touch, then you're a man, my son. This poem reminds me of Michael Nakasone the first Hawaii person to be inducted into the National Band Association Hall of Fame. He has been recognized by his peers as the best in the country, and his heart has remained humble. His feet are always planted close to the ground. His, humu his hum humility can be attributed to his Hilo roots. Born under humble circumstances, Michael grew up in a sleepy town and never dreamed of a world outside of his hometown. His first exposure to music was as a third grader when he participated in an ukulele band playing Hawaiian music. The experience ignited a passion for music that remained with him for the rest of his life, and he aspired to share this passion with every student and every musician that came his way. Michael was a teacher in the truest sense of the world, word. He taught that music is a metaphor for life. The more you practice, the more you exert effort, the more discipline you impose on yourself, the better the outcome, the sweeter the melody. He drew out the best in everyone that he directed. He had a strong work ethic and by his example instilled a confidence in the players that allowed them to flourish. This is why the bands he directed were always the best of the best. And those students learned more than just music, they learned about life. And as proof of his excellent mentorship, one of Michael's students even rose to become a recipient of the National Band Association Hall of Fame himself. And that's Chadwick Kamei, our Pearl City High School bandmaster. Surely our community is proud of Michael and his accomplishments. We are fortunate to have in our midst a talented conductor, a passionate musician, a patient and amazing teacher. But more importantly, we are blessed to call Michael Nakasone an exemplary man. Congratulations, Michael, for this honor of having this auditorium named after you. On behalf of a grateful community, our State Senate would like to honor you with this certificate of recognition. And we also have one for you to take home and one for you to leave here and to hang in the auditorium. Mahalo for your service. Mahalo for your tireless devotion. Thank you, Senators Kidani and Nishihara. Our next selection is one of Maestro Nakasone's favorites. Otorino Respigi's The Pines of the Appian Way is the last movement of the symphony, The Pines of Rome. Conducting this selection is Mr. Chadwick Kame, the current director of bands at Pearl City High School. Please enjoy The Pines of the Appian Way.
Next, we'd like to bring up Representative Greg Takayama and his colleagues, Representatives Takumi, Aquino, and Luke. Governor Caetano, it's, it's even harder to go fifth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, you know, I reflect on the fact that in a society that's increasingly divided along so many ways, it's truly comforting to know that there's one thing we all share, and that is a love of music. And no one has done more to preserve and enhance our love of music than Mike Nakasone, our music man. You know, it's... it's And it's worth mentioning, I think, the fact that Mike is not only a member of the National Band Directors Hall of Fame, he's actually a member of two National Band Director Halls of Fame, one of only a handful of band directors in the history of our nation to be so honored. So that's another fact that um, speaks to the recognition that Mike has earned for Pearl City High School, not only here locally, but throughout the nation. And I think it's also worth mentioning the fact that Mike has produced not only outstanding musicians, but he's produced outstanding citizens. Many of them are on stage here today, but many others are in our community as um, family members, as leaders of our business and government community, and for that, we truly appreciate, Mike, for all you've done. So it's our pleasure to present on behalf of the State House of Representatives a certificate that so recognizes your contributions. Thank you. Thank you, Representatives Takayama, Takumi, Akino, and Luke. Our next selection this afternoon is Songs of Aloha, arranged by Ralph Ford. This piece was commissioned by the Pearl City High School Band and dedicated to Mr. Nakasone. It features the Hawaiian Wedding Song, the Hawaiian War Chant, and Aloha Oi. Conducting this selection is Mr. Chadwick Kame, and will feature dancers from Halau Hula Olana and Halau Lilia Makanoe. And now, Songs of Aloha.
Next, we'd like to bring up Councilmember Brandon Elefante for a presentation. To the Honorable David Ige, Don, Governor Wahe'e, Lynn, Governor Cayetano, and former First Lady Vicky Cayetano, honorable guests, wow. What can I say, right? Isn't just this so incredible? And to really honor Mr. Nakasone. And when I was back there, I asked him, what does the D mean in your middle name, right? We always see buildings named after people, but what is the D? I like to think it's the greatest. He did tell me his middle name stands for Dan. Yet, we will remember and cherish for many years to come the Michael D. Nakasone Performing Arts Center. And what a remarkable accomplishment. I know the previous speakers before me spoke very eloquently about the people here that perform music. And as a former musician myself, Although the reason why I did join band was because we had AC. <laughs> right? Some band members here would agree with me, right? Having AC. And to be away from, well, different crowds at school, you would, one would say. But all in all, I think it, Mr. Nakasone really had that wow factor from how he performed to what it showed in his students to future students and also to citizens, as Representative Takayama mentioned, in the state of Hawaii, but all throughout the world. And lastly, in closing, Mr. Nakasone, your work's not done. Your art, your music, especially in an age where music is key to bringing people together, you really elevated a standard of excellence for all musicians and band directors. And we can see it clearly through band master Kame and just your work and him looking after you and following hopefully one day in your footsteps. But this honor and this day is for you. And I'd like to conclude band master Nakasone, maestro Nakasone. I don't know how you get that name. That's kind of cool. <laughs> we love you and there's nothing you can do about it. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, Council Member Elefante. Next, we'd like to bring up the Honorable Mufi Hanneman to say a few words. Hello, my kako, everyone. Aloha. Uh, so to put some context in the fact that uh, I was a mayor that appointed this legend here to be the Royal Hawaiian Band Bandmaster, the Royal Legacy Band, founded in 1836 by King Kamehameha III. Uh, I want to give some background on how I came to meet this legend. Uh, first of all, uh, one of the fun jobs that I had working for Governor Waihe'e uh, was to be his director of DBED. And as director of DBED, the Pro Bowl uh, was part of our priorities. And so um, at that time, I get a phone call uh, from Michael Nakasone uh, saying that uh, Pearl City Marching Band should be in the Pro Bowl. <laughs> so I go, wow, that's kind of audacious stuff for this high school. <laughs> so I go to the NFL, uh, I talk about Pearl City and Michael Nakasone, they go, no, uh, it should be a military band. I said, no, but you haven't seen them perform. Uh, they come highly recommended. Uh, this guy has done a terrific job at Pearl City. And so to add to that mix of being able to make a big plea for local participation, I then also touted Hula Halau Olana Ai. I said, okay, so here's your band. 
and here's your hula troupe uh, to do your Pro Bowl halftime show. So they did a great job. And Michael was very happy. Now fast forward, uh, and Governor Cayetano is governor, and he asked me one year if I could help again with the Pro Bowl. This time, Mike calls me again. So I figure, Hana Ho, right, Pro Bowl? This guy's talking about not just Pro Bowl, how about Super Bowl? I said, slow your roll, Mike, slow your roll, okay? Let me try to work on getting you back into the Pro Bowl. Now uh, I have the honor of representing this district as your council member, continuing to watch the many performances. Now I, I become a, a major fan and supporter, not just of Pearl City Marching Band, but of this man. So I become mayor, and you all know I love music. And by the way, like Governor Ega, I think I kind of lost the invitation, yeah? <laughs> to, to sing uh, today with, with the Royal Hawaiian Band and all this. Band. Now, anyway, uh, so now I decide, after talking to Mike, uh, if he would be interested in being the Royal Hawaiian Band Bandmaster. Uh, and of course, uh, he was very enthusiastic about it, but I didn't realize the mini outcry that I got uh, from some folks in the community. And if, of course, you all know I'm not new to controversy. Uh, it follows me everywhere I go. <laughs> and in this particular appointment, they were saying, how can you bring someone who just has led high school kids and be a leader of a band that has a rich legacy like the Royal Hawaiian Band. And now he's gonna to have to work with adults, not just youth. Does he really know the Hawaiian culture? Can he really understand that? And he's gonna go into that crazy world of government where you have to go and defend your budget, city council hearings, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I have another conversation with Mike and I guess that's when his Uchi Nanchu spirit came out. He wasn't phased at all. Uh, he said, no, uh, I can do the job, uh, I'm ready, and I can make a contribution. So I'm here to tell you, this man follows a maxim of leadership that I've always admired. People who leave the place better than they found it. And that's what he did. He came to the Royal Hawaiian Band. Uh, he engaged a mayor who was all too willing to perform with them everywhere they went. But most importantly, he took it to another level. And today, you have Clark Bright now taking that legacy that Mike left behind, and he's putting his own imprimatur on it to be able to ensure that we continue to have a Royal Hawaiian band that's unique and different from any other band in the United States of America. So Mike, I came here today to congratulate you, Brenda, and your wonderful children. Uh, it's gonna be nice to come every year as I do to this particular Cultural Center to be part of your scholarships and awards assembly. Now it's no longer just Pearl City Performing Arts Center. It is the Michael D. Nakasone Performing Arts Center. Love you, man. Thank you, Mr. Hanneman. The next selection was composed for the special occasion. We would like to bring out composer Robert W. Smith, professor and director of the music industry program at Troy University to say a few words about this composition. Aloha. It is so wonderful to be back here in Pearl City and to stand in these hallowed halls where music has resonated now for decades at the highest level and the highest quality. If you'll allow me, however, I've been introduced as a composer. I'm going to ask your indulgence. I don't want to stand here as a composer. I want to stand here as a dear personal friend. I want to stand here as a family member, the true spirit of Ohana and be a family member with the wonderful Nakasone family who have shared Michael with us across the nation for so many decades. Chad called me uh, last year and said, Robert, would you consider writing a piece for this event? And of course, I, I said, yes, I am honored for my dear friend Michael. I am honored 
to do this. And I said to Chad, I said, what, what, what kind of piece do you think he would like? He said, you know, he really loves marches. He loves marches. I said, okay, I think I've got an idea. And so my goal was to write an American march that truly was uniquely Hawaiian at the same time. Looking at two different merging of styles and we look at the cultural fusion on the great islands, the great state of Hawaii, and we realize what a special place this is. And Michael Nakasone and his legacy represents that. So I had an idea, and I must tell you, we're about to perform this uh, for the very first time. It's about to be a world premiere. It was inspired by a queen, Lily Uokalani, who wrote this melody, this beautiful melody, Aloha Oi, literally, in, in the late 1870s, 1878. And from there, knowing that, that song, and I've heard it my entire life, I realized that makes a perfect trio. The musicians in the audience know exactly what I mean by the term trio, a perfect trio to a classic American march. So with that in mind, looking at this, I truly went, wait a minute, this is about royalty, inspired by a queen, using a melody written by a queen for a man who was the bandmaster of the Royal Hawaiian Band, America's second oldest professional music organization, 1836 for the Royal Hawaiian Band. The only one that is older is our United States Marine Band in Washington, D.C., and they were in the 1790s. But the Royal Hawaiian Band and, and has gone on for so long and under Michael's leadership, Clark, and it just continues to share the Hawaiian spirit with the rest of the world. But I got to tell you also, Michael Nakasone in our world, in, in the world of music, is royalty. What he has done for bands, what he has done for music, what he has done for the state of Hawaii, and sending it around the world through the great Pearl City Band and his decades here, and then his work with the Royal Hawaiian Band, Michael Nakasone, is music royalty. I hope you'll join me in, in appreciating him for everything that he has done for us. Now, I must tell you, I can sit here and these are just words, but I also need to let you know that this, as you know, is, is people that have played, students from over the decades that have played under his baton, right, they're here for a reason. They love him, like I do. They love him. But his true legacy is about to be displayed because we're about to premiere a concert march that was never played until last Tuesday. Last Tuesday is the first time. And we have spent possibly 30 minutes this week on this particular march. And the sight read, that was Michael's legacy. I must tell you, the greatest thing about Michael is his sharing nature. He's a teacher. Like me, I, I tell people very clearly, other than being a father and a husband, the most important word in my vocabulary, the most important role in my life is teacher. And that is Michael Nakasone. And when you hear and realize the music that he has shared with all these musicians on the stage and the fact that they can read this, sight read this, and play this tonight for you, that's truly a mark of a great man, music royalty. Ladies and gentlemen, we hope you enjoy the world premiere, very affectionately given as a great gift to my dear friend and my dear friends and family, my musical family here. We hope you enjoy the Royal Hawaiian. Thank you. 
Next, we'd like to bring up Superintendent Hayashi, Assistant Deputy Superintendent Armstrong, and Complex Area Superintendent Hui to say a few words. Aloha, Governor Ige, First Lady Amano Ige, Governor Waihe, Governor Cayetano, Senators, Representatives, and Council Members, our guest band directors, our outstanding select ensemble, our Kumu and Halal, our students, teachers, and staff, both present and past, the Nakasone family, and our man of the hour, Mr. Mike Nakasone. Thank you for having us here today. I'm joined by Deputy Superintendent Heidi Armstrong and Complex Area Superintendent Keith Hui. It's an honor to be part of this wonderful ceremony. It's not an exaggeration to call Mike the most influential and respected band director in Hawaii. His professional accomplishments in music, many of which you're familiar with, and many with which you've learned about today are truly staggering when you realize it's the work of one individual. His tireless efforts have helped to develop music programs across the state at all levels, from students still learning their instruments and how to play in a group for the very first time, to our finest public and private school programs and our state's most historic and respected bands. Mike has been able to connect every organization he's touched and bring them together for, to the benefit of music and music education in Hawaii. I'm not even going to try to talk about his long list of awards and recognitions or we'll be here all weekend. But the most amazing thing about Mike has been his ability to lead and bring people together. His work in our public schools alone, at Wahiwa Intermediate, Mililani High, and here at Pearl City High School, has been truly inspiring. His work over five decades has created remarkable experiences and memories, and has launched many careers in music. His name and his passion resonate among band, amongst band programs across the state and across generations. That's especially true here at Pearl City High, where he developed the wind ensembles and the fearsome Charger Marching Band into national powers admired by colleagues, universities, and music performers. He's truly a legend that helped to, helped to transform a generation of Pearl City students and families. Just say his name down at Wild Zippies or the Pearl City Longs and you'll see what I mean. Mike is a humble man who will never take credit, but continues, but countless families throughout Hawaii has been touched by his dedication to our students and his passion for education. Mike, we cannot thank you enough for everything you've done for band programs and music education at Hawaii's public schools. On behalf of Deputy Superintendent Heidi Armstrong, Complex Area Superintendent Keith Hui, and the entire Hawaii State Department of Education, congratulations on this well-deserved award. Mahalo. Thank you, Superintendent Hayashi, Assistant Deputy <laughs> Superintendent Armstrong, and Complex Area Superintendent Hui. 
Kui Li was a gifted musician and composer. His work, I'll Remember You, is a standard for many of our island musicians. Masterfully arranged by Gavin Min, we would like to bring up Maestro Nakasone to the stage for a lay presentation from the band members and a few of our audience members. Conducting this song is the former director of bands at Pearl City, Mr. Kent Sato. Mr. Sato worked alongside Mr. Nakasone for many years, helping him build and sustain the band program. This song will feature Brody Nakasone, the maestro's grandson on guitar. Please welcome to the stage, Mr. Kent Sato conducting I'll Remember You.
Mr. Nakasone's influence goes far beyond our island borders. There are many people across the world that wanted to be here, but unfortunately couldn't make it. We have a special video from band directors that wanted to send their congratulations to Maestro Nakasone. Please enjoy. Congratulations from the Walker family on having the auditorium named after you. We're driving down the road right now to Disney World, but we couldn't think of anything better than making this video for you as we drive. <laughs> so, we love you, Mike. We love you, Mike. Have a great day and congratulations. Hi, Michael. This is Myron Welch from the University of Iowa. Congratulations on the naming of the Pearl City High School Auditorium, the Michael D. Nakasone Performing Arts Center. What an honor for moving to music education in Hawaii. Again, my friend, I offer you my most sincere congratulations. Enjoy this tribute from your Hawaiian colleagues and friends throughout the country. Mr. Nakasone, congratulations on the rededication of the auditorium in your name. Through your efforts, along with Mr. Kamisato, Mr. Sato, and Mr. Lopez, as well as Mr. Leong, Mr. Yoki, and Mr. Hayakawa at Highlands, thousands of students were able to experience memorable, often once-in-a-lifetime musical opportunities. Thank you for your decades of dedication and congratulations on this honor. Hi, Mike. Dave Holsinger here. My parents, who are actually shorter than I am and a little bit taller than you, once reminded me that uh, dynamite comes in small packages but makes a big, big bang. And I think that's what you have done. You have made a big, big bang in the community, the musical community of your island and the world in general for that fact. And I'm pretty proud to, of you for this honor that you're getting tonight. It's not often someone gets a performing arts center named after them. I'm thinking when I retire, I think I have talked a custodian into spray painting my name on one of the garage doors in the back of the music building. Yours will last a whole lot longer than mine. Congratulations on a wonderful evening. Have a great time. Look forward to seeing you soon again. Hi, Michael. Congratulations. This is Tom Friscillo. I do not have a video, but I do have voice memo. So, you certainly deserve the honor, and I wish you the very, very best. Please say hello to Brenda. Both of you deserve the honor because she has been through this with you. Take care, my friend. Hey, Michael. Roy Holder here. Sorry to be so scruffy. We're in Sedona, Arizona. I've been hiking in the Red Rocks all day. I want to congratulate you on your getting this auditorium named after you. It's only fitting after your incredible career and everything you've done for all of us. Now, my friend, I want to thank, I want to really say how much I appreciate all you've done for the band business forever and ever. Looking forward to being with you more times. Wish we could be there today. Hi, Michael. Jay Gephardt here. Just sending my best wishes to you for this incredible honor. Can't think of anyone more deserving than to have a auditorium name for them. Your legacy will continue on for many, many years, just as it should. So please accept my congratulations and know that I wish I could be there to enjoy this very special time for you. Thanks, Michael. Congratulations. A few years ago, I asked Mr. Nakasone to be the guest conductor for our Kauai Youth Honor Band and Kauai Community College Wins with me. As I watched him work with our students, I vowed to myself to be more like him. He is the embodiment of humble. He is powerfully assertive in the most unassuming way. And most importantly, he brings out the best in others because he is committed to celebrating the work of others above himself. The musicians he worked with still speak fondly of their experience under his baton. So on behalf of all of them on Kauai, I want to congratulate him on this great honor and to thank him for being the great inspiration that he is. Hello, Nakasone Sensei. Mr. Michael Nakasone and all of my good friends in Hawaii. I am Toshio Akiyama, one of Michael Nakasone's best musical friends in Japan. I am very honored and happy to send this message of the congratulations for the renaming 
of the Pearl City Cultural Center to the Michael D. Nakasone's Auditorium. I know Michael contributed not only to the Pearl City High School, but to all of the music culture in Honolulu and the entire state of the Hawaii. His great name and contribution will be remembered forever. Congratulations on today's ceremony and best wishes for the future. Thank you to inviting me to be a part of today's ceremony. Thank you very much. Bye. Good evening and aloha everyone. My name is Denby Dung Kabaldin. When I was growing up as a student in Hawaii, I had heard of Mr. Nakasone's inspiring teaching and leadership, but it wasn't until 2005 that I was blessed to meet him when he became the bandmaster of the Royal Hawaiian Band. I watched as his vision of greatness brought out the best in everyone around him, taking the Royal Hawaiian Band to new heights. We traveled on a goodwill tour to Japan, the first time the band had traveled in over 17 years. He also led the creation of several recordings, including the very first and only Christmas recording in the band's history. Mike featured the talents of each member, highlighting them in solos or projects, which matched their unique skills. That's the thing about Mike. He takes the time to get to know you and will discover what you're good at, and then he will create opportunities for those talents to shine. A true educator at heart, during his time as bandmaster, Mike increased our school concerts, sparking joy in music in Hawaii's keiki. Band members gave instrument demonstrations, students were invited to play percussion with the band, and he added songs like Harry Potter and SpongeBob SquarePants to her repertoire. During SpongeBob, Mike would ask for a volunteer, and a student conducted the Royal Hawaiian Band, giving them an opportunity of a lifetime. Mike also increased our outreach concerts to our kupuna, finding ways to connect to those who could not come to us. He added an oli to begin our concerts, and it was powerfully chanted by Miss Alohohula Pi'ilani Vahine Smith to honor our aina and the culture from which the Royal Hawaiian Band was formed. He added new arrangements to our repertoire, making sure everyone felt connected to the music. My family and I were blessed to be in Troy, Alabama, as Mike became the first band director from Hawaii to be inducted into the National Band Association Hall of Fame of Distinguished Conductors, a reflection of the national impact he has made. It is so fitting to have an auditorium named after you, Mike, a hall which will resonate in music the way your impact resonates throughout Hawaii and beyond. That music is possible because of the people who you have inspired. You believe in every single person you meet and you bring out the best in all of us. Look around this auditorium and see the outpouring of appreciation we all have for you. Everything you have shared is reflected back in the faces smiling at you tonight. We celebrate your great deeds as they will live on forever as the beautiful sounds of music ring through the Michael D. Nakasone Performing Arts Center. Congratulations, Bandmaster Nakasone, Brenda, and the entire Nakasone Ohana. We celebrate with you all. Mahalo. Good evening from Hattiesburg, Mississippi. My name is Travis Higa. I am the Associate Director of Bands at the University of Southern Mississippi. Being a local boy from Hawaii, I have noted Mr. Nakasone's long-standing reputation, and he remains a role model to me to this day. I've witnessed how he is the biggest advocate for music. I've witnessed how he embodies the Loha spirit everywhere that he goes. And I've witnessed how much passion he has for, for providing the best opportunities for all of his students. I've carried these lessons with me everywhere that I've taught and continue to practice it with my current students at USM. Mr. Nakasone, thank you so much for all that you have done for music in Hawaii. I would not have the love and passion for music if it were not for your vision and your guidance. Congratulations on this momentous occasion. It is so well deserved. Thank you. Hi, Michael. I am pleased to send congratulations for this wonderful honor. It is appropriate 
that you receive this richly deserved recognition. Becky joins me in sending our warmest greetings. Congratulations, Mr. Nakasone. While we have never really met professionally, please know your teachings, especially your legacy as the band director at Pearl City High School, greatly influenced my career. First, growing up in Hawaii, playing in one of your students, Alden Sata's bands, but also as a musician, hearing your performances at the Midwest Convention and, and at the ABA Convention and the many OBDAs over the years. You are truly a musical treasure and one of Hawaii's greatest legacies. Congrats on having the auditorium named after you, Maestro. Aloha from Florida. Hi, Michael. I wanted to give you a hearty congratulations on the naming of the Michael D. Nakasone Center for the Performing Arts in Honolulu. I am so proud of you and I'm so happy that they're doing this for you. Uh, you're a great colleague and no one is more deserving of this honor that I can think of than you are. What you've done for bands, not only in the state of Hawaii, but also as a United States ambassador and international ambassador is beyond reproach. And I, again, give you my heartiest congratulations on this great honor. My best to you and to Brenda. Thank you so much for hosting my visit a few years ago with Chad. It was a great time, and you guys are what I consider to be the greatest hosts of all time. Once more, congratulations on this great honor. Hi, Michael. This is Lowell. I just can't begin to tell you how excited I am to share this opportunity with you. Uh, congratulations. What an honor to have a performing arts hall named after you. I can think of nobody in the industry that deserves it more than you. Uh, going back, having covered your career and knowing a little bit about it at all levels, everything from middle school, high school, the awards that you've, you have won, the awards that you have deserved uh, from all agencies and uh, all those alphabet soup organizations that are so important to us all, uh, and, and to be honored by your state. Uh, and being a native son is so, so important and impactful to all concerned. You know, when one spends their lifetime developing skills, as you have, developing the love and the passion for sharing art and music and what that does to contribute to, to our profession, uh, uh, you are so rightfully in a position to be honored as such. Uh, you are amongst the greats, and I just consider myself very fortunate to be your friend, uh, to having uh, seen you and work beside you at conventions. Uh, you always have such a smile. You represent your state and yourself so well. Uh, you make us all feel better, and we are better human beings because of what you have contributed. Michael, I am so proud of you, as we all are. This is going to be just one in a long legacy of what you are contributing and will continue to contribute. God bless you, my friend. Aloha, Michael. Paula Kreider here, sending greetings from Texas. I'm so delighted to be a part of this celebration of your remarkable career. I remember the first time I ever heard the Pearl City Band all those years ago, and I was struck not only by the fact that there was an incredible musician on the podium, but that I was in the presence of a master teacher as well. And as I had the privilege of getting to know you over all of these years, I also came to know that I was in the presence of a very caring and beautiful human being. Congratulations, Michael. You're the best. Mike, I want to congratulate you on this fine honor that is so deserving for everything that you've done during your band career. You know, when I first learned of you, it was just wonderful to hear how highly you are regarded in our profession and for everything that you've done for bands, not only in Hawaii, but throughout the entire United States. Uh, you're such a kind person. And during my recent trip to Hawaii, it was wonderful just to hear the passion you have for the profession and for the students that have been lucky enough to have had you for, a, for an educator. 
So I want to send along my congratulations to you. This is a most deserved honor, and I'm doing this not only of my position here at Texas A&M, but also as a past president of the American Bandmasters Association. This could not be more appropriate or happen to a nicer guy. Congratulations to you, Mike. Hello, this is Dr. Oliver Boone with the High School Band Directors National Association. On behalf of Michael Nagasoni, we're very proud of you, Michael. Spanning a career of over 50 years, you have served the great state of Hawaii with love for band. And tonight you're being honored and we want to celebrate along with you. Congratulations. You made the statement a long time ago that being a band director is the greatest job in the world. I can't argue with you, not one bit. Congratulations, you deserve it. We're proud for you. Congratulations, Mr. Nakasone. I reflect so fondly of your warm and sincere encouragement as a teacher to always strive to be the best musician I could be. That encouragement influenced me later to continue that path to where I am now as a college band director in Los Angeles. This renaming of the Pro City Performing Arts Center is only fitting to the tremendous legacy and impact you have given to Hawaii's musical youth like myself. Thank you, Mr. Nakasone, and congratulations on this well-deserved honor. Hi, Michael and family. We're honored to be a part of this celebration of naming of this hall for you. We want to thank you for making us feel so welcome as a part of the Hawaiian band family. Hi, Michael. We want to just say what a great honor it is for you to have this concert hall named after you and what a legacy that is. In fact, that brings up a point, Michael. The last chapter that I wrote in the Teaching Music Through Performance and Band series is titled Building a Legacy in the Pursuit of Excellence. Michael, you are the epitome of that title. And we want to just say that for generations to come, your legacy and the excellence that you've built all through your career is going to live on for many, many years to come through all of these students and teachers who are out there now that you have influenced in their lives. There's a wonderful quote by Peter Stropel that I want to share with you. A legacy is not something you leave for people. A legacy is what you leave in people. And certainly, Michael, you have left a huge amount of yourself, your leadership, your musicianship, your personality, and yes, the excellence that you have achieved throughout your career. So we both want to say congratulations, well-deserved, and carry on. What a great tribute. At this time, we'd like to bring up the maestro himself to say a few words. Maestro Nakasone. <laughs> that helps. <laughs> Every time when I was with the city, Mayor Mufi Hanneman would come out and we had to come out. Then I would come out, then everybody would laugh, just like how you laugh. <laughs> it's just like Martin Jeff, but, but he was a great mayor. I enjoyed working with the city. But uh, I wasn't gonna say that, but uh, anyway, uh, speaking is not what I do. I, I really struggle with speaking, but um, for today, I need to do it. So everybody, aloha! Aloha! Mahalo for taking the time from your busy schedule to be here. I am humbled and honored by this great recognition and your presence today. Mahalo to our governors, senators, representatives, mayor, councilmen, and superintendents for your wonderful remarks and special recognition. A hand, please. to this amazing 100-member group of outstanding musicians, singers, and dancers 
Mahalo for your superb performance. Weren't they wonderful, everybody? <laughs> and what a special honor and surprise, really a great surprise, to have my good friends, Dr. Terry Austin, Professor Joseph Herman and composer Robert Smith fly in from the East Coast and conduct today. A hand for those marvelous people, please. A hand, please, for this outstanding band, performers and conductors. Please, band, stop. Please stand. Wonderful band. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mahalo. They are just the best musicians, and I am really, really grateful that they came out. Seven rehearsals, and today another rehearsal and a performance, and they are just wonderful people. I am so blessed. Uh, thank you very much. I would like to extend my sincere gratitude to Superintendent Keith Hayashi, Complex Area Superintendent Keith Hui, Pearl City High School Principal Joseph Hoffman, Hoffman sorry, and the school's community council, faculty, and staff for this incredible recognition. Mahalo, mahalo. A hand for them, please. <laughs> A very special thank you to Bandmaster Chadwick Kame for working tirelessly to spearhead this dedication project and ceremony. He works magic. That's amazing what he did. I can't tell you in so many words what he has done to put everything together. This past May, Bandmaster Kame was inducted into the National High School Band Directors Hall of Fame lo located in Georgia. He also received from this organization the Dr. Long Award, which is presented to the most outstanding high school band director in the nation. Congratulations, Bandmaster Kame. Many years ago, this auditorium was just an idea. It was former principal Gerald Suyama who had the vision for a performing arts center on Pearl City High School campus. Thank you for your vision and leadership, Mr. Suyama. A handful of principal Suyama, please. In the early 90s, our Pearl City legislators worked hard, very hard, to obtain funding for this wonderful facility. Thank you, Governor Wahie and our Pearl City legislators for making our dream come true. Hand please for this wonderful people. <laughs> At the grand opening of this beautiful facility, Governor Wahei said that the reason for this facility was a Pearl City High School band. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> the credit for this facility truly belongs to all the Pearl City High School band students who work tirelessly to promote musical excellence. The students practice diligently 
and their passion for music was evident as they performed on many local, national, and international stages. A hand for the Pearl City High School Band students, please. We were very fortunate to have had an extensive support network for the Pearl City High School Band. Our 300-member band booster organization fundraised, built props for the marching band performance, and supported the band every step along the way. I hand for the band boosters, please. <laughs> We were fortunate to have had as band directors at Pearl City, Kazu Tsunabe, Thomas Kamisato, Rodney Uehara, Sanford Masada, Kent Sato, and show designer David A. Wells, director of the famous Wells Week, or oh, as the students called it, Hell's Week. But they, <laughs> but they loved that man. I hand for all these uh, band directors, please. We had excellent musicians at Pearl City High School because of Highlands Intermediate School band director Boniface Leong. His band received the Sudler Cup from the John Philip Sousa Foundation for excellent in concert band performance. Boniface Leong was a large part for our success at Pearl City High School. Thank you, Bandmaster Leong, please. Yeah. Bandmaster. Please stand, Bonnie. Hey, there he is, the man. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Bonnie. If you teach band in a high school, you know how valuable the middle school teacher is. And he was the best in the nation. In summary, this incredible honor is meant to honor the effort, efforts of many. It is a tribute to the community leaders government leaders, and legislators who have guided and continue to support this wonderful complex. To the teachers and administrators on all levels who have given their wholehearted support. To the many parents and band boosters who through the decades have poured out the energy, time, and finances to support their young musician. And most importantly, it is a tribute to the students who have given their time and talent to produce musical excellence. A hand for them, please. <laughs> and again, I want to thank Bandmaster Chadwick Kamei for making this dedication an event possible. And Auditory Manager Stephen Richter for the video production and facility operation. Please. <laughs> Lastly, but most importantly, I would like to thank my wife, Brenda, for supporting me on my musical journey for 52 years. <laughs> and also my son, Ken, his wife, Laura, my daughter, Shelly, her husband, Sean, and our four grandchildren for their support along the way. Mahalo, please.
And so I humbly accept this truly amazing recognition on behalf of the students, parents, teachers, legislators, administrators, and community leaders who have caught the dream of what is possible, that when people work cooperatively, they can accomplish great things. To all who are part of the Pearl City legacy, please join me for repeating as we say to you, mahalo. Mahalo. <laughs> Thank you very, very much from the bottom of my heart. I love you all, and I really thank you for spending your, your time with us today. Um, I need you to repeat after me one last time. Aloha! Congratulations, Maestro Nakasone, on all your accomplishments throughout your career. All of us here have you to thank for your selflessness, determination, and musicianship. And now, please welcome to the podium the man of the hour, Maestro Na Michael Nakasone, conducting our national march, John Philip Sousa's The Stars and Stripes Forever.
Before we introduce the last song and conductor this afternoon, at the end of the ceremony tonight, Maestro Nakasone will be outside the auditorium to greet people. Please allow a few minutes after the ceremony for Maestro Nakasone to make it to the front of the auditorium. Before he conducts, we would like to bring him to the podium, Mr. Gerald Suyama, retired principal of Pearl City High School, to make some remarks. What a, what a performance so far, huh? Um, outside of the family from Hilo and Brenda, I think I know Michael Nakasone the longest. I think it's about 60 years. And I mean, we've gone through thick and thin. Our families are close. Shelly and Ken call me uncle. My kids call Michael Nakasone uncle and auntie. So we're very close as a family because we've been together for such a long time. Mike and I started off in music together, and I knew he was kind of different because he went to every clinic possible. A lot of band directors didn't go to all the clinics, but I always saw Michael Nagasone at the clinics. He has his obsession to, to improve all the time, sometimes at the cost of Brenda. <laughs> he saw, I think Brenda hardly saw him. So anyway, we've gone through this a long time, and, but after spending uh, two years in the Army and a, and a stint in Vietnam, my hearing was going kind of funny, so I told myself, I'm going to go change my career a little bit. And so I went into administration, and when Pro City opened up, um, I applied, and I talked to it with Mike, he says, uh, if I come there, are we going to fight? He says, he says no, we're going we're to be still friends forever. So all this time, the 17 years is about with, with Mike Nakasone and doing all these wonderful things. One of the things that most people don't know about, by the way, I didn't have a chance to talk to the two gentlemen here, but one of the things, the accomplishment uh, that uh, I will always remember was the um, performance at the International, um, Mid Midwest International Clinic and that's where the finest bands are allowed to perform. 100 bands are asked to apply, and they pick five bands. Pro City was one of the five bands selected that year. And then we went to the meeting because I, I'm a former band director, so Mike says, let's go together to the, to the meeting in, in June to find out what this whole thing is about, the performances in December. And so we had a four-hour meeting, and then John Painter, Dr. John Painter, who was the um, President of the association at that time says, uh, hey, you two guys, you're having lunch with me. And we sit at my table. We all sat down having lunch together, all the other band directors that were involved in this. And it's traditional at this time. He clinked his glasses and said, this is it's traditional now that we, um, we announce the feature band for the year. And the feature band is the one that plays the last. Of the five days that the bands play, of the five bands, excellent bands, the worst of the five plays on Monday. <laughs> And then it goes like this. Well, he says, the feature band for this, this year is the Pro City High School Band. And Mike and I, I could just see Mike turn white because he knew that the pressure was on you know, to be uh, considered the, the feature band. And so he came back and he worked them like football players. I mean, two a day, summer camp, all that kind of stuff came into play. And we just whipped that band together, unbelievably so. Well, we got to the place, we got to the, um, the uh, uh, it was, a, it was being held at the Hilton, Chicago Hilton, and there were about 8,000 musicians there, band directors and so on. Now, we were playing in a ballroom, so it's, doesn't, it's not conducive to sound as much as this place is. So they had 2,500 chairs for the band directors to sit, and we were sitting there, we were waiting there. And remember, this is December 17th in the middle of winter. And I go, I go out to the band, kids sitting there ready to play. And I look at the first trumpet player. In fact, Nicole's right here. And Nicole says, I'm really nauseated. I said, oh, she's playing a duet in <laughs> Capriccio Italian. And then I go to Ra Reynold Saito's son. And he's playing trombone. He says, oh, I'm ready to throw up. 
So, so now I'm sitting, the concert starts, and I'm sitting in the front row with my daughter right next to me, and I'm thinking to myself, how is this going to play out? I don't know who else is sick. Right in the middle of Toccata and Fugue, the first number, Toccata and Fugue by Bach, my daughter goes, Dad, that girl, you know, with the long instrument, she just threw up. <laughs> oh, I said, whoa. So I said, so, so I never was relaxed that whole concert. I didn't know who was going to throw up next. Uh, fortunately, Nicole didn't throw up. But um, after that, after that last note was sounded, 2,500 band directors, it seemed that somebody went like this. Because 2,500 band directors just stood up and started clapping. I've never seen anything like that in my life. They called Michael to the, to the front to re uh, re receive applause seven times. And there was a guy named George Johnson, I'll never forget his name. He came up to me and says, Principal Suyama, I've been here for every one of these performances. He's an older guy. And he says, this is the best band ever. So we put, at that point in time, we put Pearl City on the map. We put Hawaii on the map, in the musical map. And ever since then, band directors have been seeking Mike out. You know, so, so when I first came to Pro City, Senator Tung Palan came to me and said, what do you want? I said, well, I need to have a gyms replace, uh, the, the bleachers replaced because they're falling up apart and they're dangerous. But the second thing I want is an auditorium. Auditorium? I said, yeah. McKinley has an auditorium. Farrington has an auditorium. Roosevelt has an auditorium. My alma mater in Maui, Baldwin High School has an auditorium. Why don't we get an auditorium? We on the west side don't have any auditoriums. We're like stepchildren. So, so she went out and, and then I told Mike about it. And bet, of course, when you let Mike the bulldog go out and let him loose, he goes to see the governor, he goes to see everybody. And nobody can say no to Mike. That's the thing about Mike. And so if you believe in karma, and if you believe in stars and planets aligning to make something work, this was an example of that. Because when we first started, as Governor Eager talked about no money coming from the, um, from the uh, Department of Education, we have to go through DAGs. We tried to get money, and then we, Governor um, Wahe got us $7 million in the first year of the biennium, and $3.3 million on the second year of the biennium. So he says, go plan. Okay, so they got me an architect, and we sat down 10, 15 times. But the initial one, he said, what do you want? I said, I want an auditorium, 1,000 seats. He says, no, 670 seats more you get, is all you're going to get. If not, it's going to be too expensive. I said, okay, then I want a scene shop in the back because in case we do musical theater, we need to have a scene shop. And then up here, I want a multi-purpose building that could be used as a rehearsal and tune-up hall in case we did a parade of bands here. And plus, that was used also as a craft room there was a kiln back there. There was a pottery area. I wanted this to be a true cultural center. So the guy says, okay, I'll call you in two weeks. I'll give you the um, actual uh, cost. He calls me back. He says, 20 million. I said, ah. Oh. He said, you can get the auditorium for 10 million. I said, okay, let's start with that. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm never going to get the other two buildings. It's just too expensive. So again, the lineup, the stars in the and the planets are lining up. It just so happens that the uh, public works um, ch chief is my classmate from kindergarten all the way up to college. His wife is my vice principal, and his daughter is a senior in my school. Now, she gets elected winter ball queen. So I told my friend, come over and you crown her instead of me traditionally as a principal crowning her. So he came over and he crowned her and he's drinking coffee afterwards. He says, you know, the bid for the elementary, new elementary school in Kapolei came out half of what we thought would be. So he says, I'll release your bid for the auditorium on Monday. I said, okay, fine. Well, I didn't think about it after that. And then about a few weeks later, his wife comes running into my office and says, hey, go call him up because the bid he told me was really low. 
So I said, okay. I called him up right away, and he says, I said, how much? He says, 5.2 million for your auditorium. I said, wow. Can I get the whole thing? He says, yeah, I think you can get the whole thing. And all the line of alignment of the party, the stars and the planets just came to the point where we even got the clouds involved in that. Because if you don't have the clouds, the sound just goes up in the 10-story fly gallery, and you won't hear much of the sound. And then the wings came in also. So all of this, Mike worked his butt off to get. And so it's so appropriate at this point to name this auditorium Michael Nakasone Cultural Arts. And that's the rest of the story. Um, this, you know, too, um, Hawaii Aloha to me is a second anthem of Hawaii. You have Hawaii Ponoi, and then you have um, Hawaii Aloha. Uh, up to now, here, I'm going to be 79 two weeks from now. I never knew what the meaning of the words were. I sang the words, you know, but I never knew the meaning. So when I looked up the meaning, and I'm not sure if this is true because I don't know if this is Hawaii meaning, meaning or not. It seems like Hawaii Ponoi was about Kamehameha, standing with Kamehameha and protecting the land. Hawaii Aloha talked about rejoice of the land, rejoicing with the land, nurturing the land and nurturing its people. So when I was a principal, at the, when the first meeting of the year was all the principals, at the end of the um, meeting, we would all join hands and sing Hawaii Aloha as kind of a unifying song and as to renew our spirits to help the people, help the children of Hawaii. So uh, we can't do that now because of COVID, so don't hold hands. But can you, um, we're going to stand, stand up and sing. And you know what? We, I've seen this in, in K-pop concerts and stuff. <laughs> you turn on your light, and you do this. OK? So we're going to do that now. Take out your, take out your, yeah, yeah. Take out your uh, iPhones or whatever phone that you got, and we're going to do that. And you know what? We have to do it in synchronization so that we don't, so we look like a performing group. Okay? Don't pick, don't bang into each other and stuff. So it, as one row goes, go like this. Okay? All right. We're going to do Hawaii Aloha. Conducting our closing song this afternoon is retired Pearl City High School principal, Dr. Gerald Suyama. Mr. Suyama was principal from 1987 until 2000, and it was his vision of an auditorium on the campus of Pearl City High School that helped to secure this building, the new Michael D. Nakasone Performing Arts Center. Please rise if you can sing along as we close this afternoon's ceremony with Lorenzo Lyons, Hawaii Aloha.